click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends this is the video for the chapter representation and description so after the understanding of the image segmentation the outcome of the segmented image we provide here for the purpose of efficient representation and also the description so as we have the two terms in our title of the chapter so the representation part we have covered with the simple but popular boundary following algorithm then the chain coding also we have also the boundary approximations using the minimum perimeter polygon we have seen the merging techniques splitting techniques also we have also gone through the understanding of the representation with the help of signatures and in the last topic that is skeletons now the second term that we are going to start here that is description so let us address it with respect to the boundary descriptors actually the subsequent topics like the fourier descriptors and so on are the sub topics of the boundary descriptors here let us introduce first of all the boundary descriptors and then we can proceed so we consider several of the approaches to describe the boundary of a concerned region the length of the boundary is one of the simplest descriptor we have at first the number of pixels along the boundary actually gives us a rough approximation of its particular length value for the chain coded curve with the unit spacing into the both directions the number of vertical and horizontal components plus under root two times the number of diagonal components gives actually the exact value of the length the diameter of the boundary represented capital b can be defined by the formulation here so i am representing the diameter of the boundary capital b represented within the parenthesis here can be computed by having the max operation with the index factors i and j over d of we have p sub x i comma p sub x j in general so here capital d is a distance measure and the p sub x i and p sub x j are the points on to the boundary the value of the diameter and the orientation of a line segment connecting the two extreme points that comprise the diameter this line is called as the major axis of the boundary and these particular diameter values are useful descriptors of the boundary the minor axis of the boundary is defined as the line perpendicular to the major axis and of such length that the box passing through the outer four points of the intersection of the boundary with the two axes completely encloses the boundary the box is called as here the basic rectangle and the ratio of the major to the minor axis that we have discussed is actually called as eccentricity of the boundary which is also the useful descriptor so most possibly the major axis the minor axis the eccentricity these terms you must have gone through while understanding the geometrical shape of an ellipse so these are applicable to the boundaries here so these terms we carry forward so here the curvature is defined as a rate of change of the slope here in general obtaining the reliable measurements of such an curvature at the point into the digital boundary it is difficult because these boundaries tend to be locally ragged however using the difference between the slopes of the adjacent boundary segments as a descriptor of curvature at the point of intersection of the segments sometimes proves the usefulness for example let us take the vertices of the boundaries such as those shown into the figures b and d that we have already discussed with our initial topics of the chapter boundary following that tend themselves well to the curvature descriptions so with the boundary following and then further we have the minimum perimeter polygon represented so here we had the concatenated cells and the boundary represented here so the boundary was supposed to be one rubber band here that was having the shrinking effect to show you the polygon with respect to the minimum perimeter 
and this was the resulting polygon in another example that we have discussed earlier. Now as the boundary is traversed in the clockwise direction, a vertex point P is said to be a part of the convex segment if the change into the slope at P is non-negative. Otherwise the case, the P is said to belong to the segment that is concave in nature. The description of the curvature at the point can be refined further by using the ranges in the change of slope. For instance, P could be a part of nearly straight line segment if the change is less than 10 degrees or a corner point if the change exceeds the value 90 degree. So we can make one note here that these descriptors that we discuss must be used with care because their interpretation depends on to the length of the individual segments relative to the overall length of the boundary. So I hope the understanding is very much clear with respect to the descriptors we have started here. By the next lecture, the prominent and the popular one that we are going to address for the description purpose that is titled shape numbers. So I hope definitely you are benefited by the knowledge we share for our subject digital image processing. If you want to have some more information regarding the concepts, the practical hands-on if you want for MATLAB and the practice of miscellaneous problems, you can surely subscribe to eKeda channel. Thank you.